Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at Shapes and Molecules, Part 1. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to identify lone pair and bonding pair electrons, draw 3D representations of simple molecules, and explain changes of bond angles based on valence shell electron pair repulsion. The shape of any molecule is determined by the pairs of electrons or the number of pairs of electrons around the central atom. And it's important that we can identify whether we have lone pairs of electrons or bonding pairs of electrons. In this example here, we've got ammonia. Now, ammonia here has two types of pairs of electrons. At the top here, it's got the lone pair of electrons, and it's got one lone pair of electrons. These are unshared and not taking part in bonding. The other pairs of electrons are described as bonding pairs of electrons, and it's got three of those pairs of electrons, one for each covalent bond that it shares with the hydrogen. Now the electrons exist in what we call charge clouds and we get two electrons, a pair of electrons in each charge cloud and we can represent those here in a similar way just below. Our lone pair again here and our bonding pairs of electrons below. Importantly charge clouds or electron clouds are going to repel each other and it's that repulsion is which gives the overall molecule its final shape. We have to be happy about drawing shapes of molecules and we have a certain way of representing the three-dimensional shapes that molecules exhibit. So on the left hand side with the blue background here, we've got a three-dimensional shape of methane with carbon being the purple atom in the middle and four grey hydrogens up to the side and then we've got one coming out and one going away. This is represented on paper as we can see here on the right-hand side with the black line drawing. The first thing to note is these straight lines. So that is the solid lines which is showing this carbon hydrogen bond here and this carbon hydrogen bond here. Those single lines are representing a carbon hydrogen bond that is in the plane. And what we mean by that is that the carbon hydrogen bond is neither going away or towards us. That is in plane. The second one we'll look at here is the carbon hydrogen bond there which is moving away from us and that is represented by the dash line. The dash line there then pointing away from us. The final bond then is a bond which is coming towards us and we represent a bond coming towards us by the wedge. Here we have then the wedge indicating that we've got carbon hydrogen bond coming towards us. So make sure you're happy with that representation and we'll be looking at how we draw those in a bit more detail in part two. The shape of a molecule is determined by the number of pairs of electrons around the central atom. And the shape is also determined by how those electron pairs repel each other. Now, bonding pairs of electrons repel each other the same. And here in my example of methane, I have a total of four bonding pairs of electrons. I'm just going to call bonding pairs BP, but you should write bonding pairs. And because they're all the same, they each repel each other equally, and that makes the angle between the carbons and the hydrogens the same, and that for our three-dimensional 
object is 109.5 degrees. Now, if we go and look at a molecule which has the same number of pairs of electrons, we might see something different. This time we have ammonia. Ammonia is very similar to methane, but this time we have, instead of just four bonding pairs, we have three bonding pairs from each of the nitrogen-hydrogen bonds and one lone pair of electrons, which I'll denote LP. Now, the shape looks very similar, but whereas before each of the bonding pairs of electrons repelled each other equally, there is now a greater repulsion between the lone pair and the bonding pair that's because the lone pair of electrons wants to take up more room. And the bond angle, therefore, is reduced by 2.5 degrees between the bonding pairs. Our next example, then, is water. And again, water's got four pairs of electrons, but instead of the three bond pairs, we now have two bond pairs. and two lone pairs of electrons. Again, the lone pairs of electrons repel each other more than the bonding pairs of electrons, and they take up more room, and in turn, they reduce that bonding pair angle between them by another two and a half degrees, and we have a new bond angle of 104.5 degrees. So for each lone pair, we reduce the bonding angles between the bond pairs by, by, by 2.5 degrees. The reason that we get this reduction in bond angle is because electron pair repulsion here is greatest for lone pair, lone pair. And that repulsion is greater than the bond pair, lone pair interaction, which is greater again than the bond pair, bond pair. Just as a word of note, don't use this shorthand notation in examinations make sure you use the full annotation of lone pair, lone pair repulsion, greater than bond pair, lone pair, greater than bond pair, bond pair. Recap then for shapes of molecules. Bond pairs uh, share electrons between the atoms, while lone pairs of electrons are unshared. If we're doing 3D drawings, the line indicates molecules or Covalent bonds which are in the plane, the wedge is coming towards you and the dash is away for you. Electron repulsion determines the shape of molecules and each lone pair reduces the bond angle between the bond pairs by two and a half degrees. And finally, the lone pair, lone pair repulsion is greater than the lone pair, bond pair repulsion, which in turn is greater than the bond pair, bond pair repulsion. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.